I, I want to use the first field of medicine uh, as an example. Well, my introduction is going to be uh, longer, and then I will just uh, put some of the questions that we had just as a, a, a case study that you can refer to when it comes to your involvement in discussing the other fields. Um, in the book, Radical Reform, I'm uh, saying that there is one field where the scholars started the methodology that I was uh, proposing in a way which was quite interesting, and it's mainly in medicine. And we have to ask ourselves why in medicine it was possible. For three reasons, uh, the methodology was possible. The first, because we are, when it comes to medicine, dealing with death and life. And it's quite clear that the scholars of the text cannot take a decision. It's too dangerous, too uh, critical. We are uh, uh, discussing uh, border situations where we really need to get the knowledge. So this is why they acknowledge, by definition, they uh, acknowledge the fact that their knowledge was limited in that field and that they needed the support of the scholars and uh, knowing where the, the, the medical uh, uh, doctors were. The second is apparently because we are mainly dealing with uh, an issue which is not connected with uh, uh, money uh, per se. It's the field of health. While if you go deeper and deeper in ethics, you understand that everything, even in medical sciences, has to do with money. But, you know, it's mainly, okay, let us talk about health and let us talk. So the first, that when you are not talking about money and the second dimension about power, the perception is, okay, we can go for it. But still, we have... <clears throat> Uh, in our societies, Muslim majority countries, as well as here, really when it comes to who has the authority and where uh, does the power lie and the money, all these dimensions are sometimes preventing uh, the scholars or the societies to provide the communities with dynamic settings and open uh, platforms. Uh, so the very fact that uh, uh, the topic itself was critical, we need answers, and the scholars uh, need the, the scholars of the text, Olama and Nusus, they need the, the clear answer to some of the questions, clear answers to some of the questions, uh, help this to, to happen. Still, it's, uh, it's done and it's quite recent. In 81, in Kuwait, uh, they started this Islamic organization of medical sciences. And they started to work in English and in Arabic and to publish uh, uh, the results of their discussions. There are nine volumes in Arabic and in English. <coughs> they also have uh, a website that you, everything is in the book uh, that you can uh, come back to it and, and, and you can find uh, this information. And in fact, uh, even though they were working together, it's still not on an equal footing. It's still medical doctors being there, giving their knowledge, and then the scholars are coming with an answer, which could be the right way. In fact, uh, it's quite clear for, this, for some medical doctors, they didn't know about the scriptural sources, so they were expecting from the scholars uh, to come with the final uh, Islamic uh, position. But what was interesting is that with the presence of the medical doctors, they got and they still are getting the complexity of the issues when it comes to some uh, situations. Um, so this is something which is working and working quite well, uh, even though we have still to be cautious because it's working quite well at a specific level when it comes to the direct complexity of the current knowledge that we have in medicine and the ethical answer. But the connection between medicine and economy, medicine and you know, the relation between northern countries and southern countries, is still all these dimensions are not always there. 
You have, for example, it's very nice to be for organ transplants, for example, say, yes, that's good, Islam is for that. But when you listen to what some of the medical doctors are saying in the States, for example, at the forefront of you know, all the more industrialized uh, 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 societies and hospitals and, and technologies, that you have medical doctors saying they are suspending their judgment, they, they are not going that direction, saying that what is now at stake with organ transplant is a new relationship between poor and rich and the pressure of the economic world on medicine is huge. So they say we are sometimes taking decision towards poor people for the sake of money and not for the sake of health. If you don't get all these connections, you, you are going to give a fatwa, which is yes, you can do it, but not understanding that the consequences can, can be very, in fact, can be uh, in opposition with the, 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 the basic ethical stand that we have to take. I will come to this. But what I wanted to, to, for, to start with is, this is uh, an area where they have been working together. They published uh, books uh, and the scholars sometimes of the text were giving papers and, and presenting the papers. And you have medical doctors coming in a specific area saying what they had to say. One of the, 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 and I will come with some of the, the issues here. So the methodology, it's not perfect. It's not at the highest level, but there is something which is acknowledgement that we need the scholars, we need the medical doctors if we want to get a fatwa. If we want to issue a fatwa, we need them. The second thing is, uh, it started with the uh, medical card of ethics that you had it with you know, the Greek time is, is you heard about what, uh, what is it called in, uh, you know that, it's the, what is it, his name again? Uh, I don't know how to say it in English. Uh, yes, Hippocrates. The is Hippocratic, it, is Hippocratic oath. The Hippocratic oath. Say it again. Hippocratic. That's it. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so this is, uh, the, 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 medical, the Muslim medical doctors, they were dealing with this and saying, we need to have something which is an Islamic card, medical card of ethics. And they came with Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim in the name, and, and I, I put it in the book, but it's in fact to come to the universal common you know, uh, principles and what ethical stands. But from an Islamic viewpoint saying, all this is done in the name of La ilaha illallah, it's in the name of Allah. Uh, the compassionate, the more merciful. So we start with this and then they are entering and, and you find it here, I swear by God the great and, and so, so, uh, uh, and so on. So I think here that there is something which in the starting point is quite interesting is to say, yes, there is an oath which is for all the medical doctors and the Muslim medical doctors, they are entering in the same. The main reference is Allah but the ethical attitude when it comes to the way you deal with uh, 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 the people, the way you deal with the, the patients, the way you deal with uh, uh, the poor and the rich should be exactly the same. So a different truth with common stand. And putting it in such a way, it's quite, it's quite interesting because in no way they are denying the fact this is, as a Muslim doctor, uh, you know, I have a, my eldest brother is a, is, a, is a medical doctor and he's always saying, you know, the difference between me and other medical doctors in the way I'm doing it is really the way that I'm trying my best to know how it works, but at the end, the success of the surgery is going to come from God. It's, I start with Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. So, you start with this, apparently it's nothing. Deeply, it's a lot. It's, it's different because it's the way you are trying to, to put yourself, to understand your code of ethics in the light of your belief. I think we should not underestimate this in medicine, but it will be exactly the same in all the other fields, is how do you start with this? So, so they started by thinking about this, proposing this as something which is, it's the same as to the consequences, is different as to the source. And the starting point of Islamic applied ethics could be we might disagree on the source, but we might find 
commonalities as to our answers. And we'll find that in many ways we have this. Having said that now, uh, this is where they came together and they started uh, almost now, uh, no, it's exactly 30 years ago, they started to work together and they started to tackle some of the, 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 the very sensitive issues. And this is where you find that the Muslims in medical ethics, they are at the forefront of this contribution. Muslims have something to say on that field. And when you are, for example, as I was attending the, the European Committee of Ethics, you can see that what we are proposing as Muslims equipped on many fields is very up to date. It's, we are in the discussion, we are contributing, which is not exactly the same in other fields, but here we are able to say, this is the Islamic answer to this, uh, or some of the Islamic views on that. So the, the, the Muslims have been effective because they organize the platform where they can share and where the scholars of the text are able in closed doors to acknowledge the fact that they don't know which is important when we deal with power, authoritative power, uh, and comes to issue of fatwa that I don't know, I listen to you. And then, for example, in one of the books, one of the scholars is turning to the medical doctor and say, we are waiting for you to tell us what is death from a medical viewpoint, the brain death, what it is, because the medical doctors were not in agreement on what is death, and when do you, you can you say he is or she is dead? A very, it's not a simple question because everything starts with this after uh, the way you are going to deal with organs and, and transplant, the way you are going to deal with the family, the way you are going to deal with, with uh, 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 the, the, even with when it comes to uh, uh, life and death and, and, and when you can stop uh, the device when you are saying, no, it's, he's dead, it, it's the final stage. So it's, it's irreversible, it's not going to work he's going to die or she's going to die, so you can stop now. So sometimes the decision is, should be taken by the medical doctor saying, it's not the faqih who is going to come and say, okay, stop it. No, you have to rely on, 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 on him or her. And this is where, for example, the oldest scholars agreed that when you are dealing with a medical doctor who is a woman, you don't need two women for one man. Which is important here, is that a woman is a woman coming and why? Because she knows what she's talking about. And this is where all this business about we, are, we need two women for one man because they are more sensitive and more emotional, forget about that. It's a question of knowledge in the sphere. And, and all what we have now in neurosciences is, I am repeating this because uh, I like it for our brothers to think about it, is that all the, all the neurosciences are telling us that the men are more emotional than women and more fragile, but they talk less. <laughs> Think about it. Think about it. That, in fact, we are more emotional, but we don't need to express it. <coughs> women are less emotional and could be emotionally stronger, but they need to talk. So they are using three times more words per day than men. <laughs> this is the average. It doesn't mean that silence is equality. <laughs> Just to hide that we are emotional. Think about it and you will see that, uh, you know, uh, when you come to the Quran, ask yourself when you have to protect yourself, Allah is starting with men. You start with men and then you kull mu'minat. So first you have to do it. But when it comes to protection, he starts with women. They are uh, protecting you, and, they, and you are protecting them. Hunna is start with men when it's the protective way, but when you have to protect yourself, it starts with you. So it's as if they are protecting you so they are stronger, you have to start by protecting yourself, you are weaker. It's in the Quran. <laughs> so sometimes the sci sciences, the contemporary sciences, are helping us to read the Quran in a new way which might be the right way, which has to acknowledge it. Okay. <laughs> Why am I saying this? No, what was the point? I was saying something before. 
Oh, yes, 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 that's it. So in this, when uh, the women are knowledgeable and they are medical doctors, they come and, 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 and the, we need the opinion of the, the doctor to tell us, the physician to tell us where we are and what is the decision. Uh, and there are questions that are coming out of this. So, so what I, I took in, in, in the book, for example, something which is important in all our understanding of the religious dimension. In the book, I'm, I'm talking about uh, uh, contraception and abortion, which is a very important discussion for us here, but throughout the world. And very often, because of the discussions that we had with Christians, Muslims end up saying that we have the same position as all the other religions, and that's wrong. It's wrong as for contraception, what we know, and Lil Azr was uh, 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 a practice that was known by the Prophet, he accepted it, and in one hadith he's saying, and uh, uh, this hadith is coming through Omar, that you need to ask your wife if you want to do the natural contraception. And the scholars understood at the beginning that uh, it was and had to do first with the fact that if you have uh, a, a, a sexual uh, relationship, in fact, the objective is the procreation. And then if you are preventing your wife from getting this, you should ask her because this is her right. Other scholars, the century, uh, uh, one century later, were saying it's not only this. Is the, the main objective of sexuality is not procreation, it's also <coughs> pleasure. So you have to ask her because she has two rights, is to get a, 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 a baby and to get a, a child or to get pleasure. So you have to respect. And the point here for us is three things is first, the Islamic position on contraception is telling us, in fact, that the objective is not only procreation as we have in Christianity, but it has to do with pleasure, it has to do with love. And the second thing which is important is the rights of women within this discussion, that you have to respect that. Having said that, it's a position which is going to have uh, important consequences in all the medical decisions with contraceptions and, and the way we have to prevent that, uh, uh, to prevent you know, uh, uh, attitudes that are wrong. So uh, the, the, the consequences of that, for example, when it comes to Africa, African countries, is what was said by some that uh, uh, family planning is wrong, we can't go for this, because contraception is not Islamic. This has to be rejected. There is something which, in the fact, why was it that the Prophet ﷺ accepted natural contraception? Is to accept the fact that the, uh, the, the, the sexual activity is not only for procreating. It has something, another dimension. It's a well-being. And if you are in Africa and you are facing the fact that you are not, the, the families, they cannot uh, cope with the situation, you need to, th to think about the strategy. Which, in fact, today, in many, in many uh, uh, African countries, it's accepted as something the family planning is accepted. What is not accepted is the way it is imposed by the West, by saying, we need to get less uh, uh, children because this is the way for you to face poverty. In fact, we don't face poverty with less children. We face poverty with better distribution of wealth around the world. It's not because of, you know, the cause is, and this is why the, 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 the conference in Egypt, in Cairo, on population, the resistance of the, the Muslim and the southern countries was, you want to impose a policy of pl uh, 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 family plannings because, in fact, you want to protect your interests and you don't want to uh, uh, <coughs> share uh, rich uh, wealth. And, and this is a very important point. This is why, you know, a, a, a very... Uh, uh, specific ethical discussion on contraception, you need to get the political consequences. What do you mean by saying it's possible? And you have to be quite clear. We are not against family planning because of the principle, but because the way it's used to protect the Western interests and something which has to do with cultural imperialism. Uh, quite interesting to, 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 to get that because uh, there is also something which is, you know, uh, genital mutilation, for example, which is not Islamic. And we said that, we repeated this. 
But for example, I went to Burkina Faso, and in Burkina Faso, the Muslims were against it. This is not Islamic. But I went to Mali, and in Mali, they said, no, we are not going to accept that. It's Islamic. And in fact, when you enter the discussion, you understand that they are, they are projecting onto a very specific ethical issue. Is it Islamic or not? Something which is the relationship with the West. This government is following the West, and it's imposed onto us. So they have an other reading of the scriptural sources because of political and ideological reasons. And you are caught between this and that. So uh, when I was in Mali, for example, uh, the council of Olama told me, you don't speak about this, please. Don't speak about it because it's a controversial issue. I say, why? There is an Islamic opinion, and there are many Islamic opinions, but yes, no, but you know, if you say this here, it means that you are supporting the government. You get all this, these tensions here. So this is, if you don't get it, so you have to say it in a diplomatic way, but you have to say it. You have to say it. You have to say that genital mutilation is not. And it's not because the, the, the French government is imposing this <coughs> onto the Malian government that you are accepting the suffering of women. That's not acceptable either. So I would say that this is where you have, you understand these challenges? But that level of complexity is not in these circles that we have in Kuwait. We just stop at, is it Islamic or not? Depending on the knowledge uh, coming by the, uh, from the physicians and the knowledge of the ulama and nusus. This is why we need to complexify, because the, the, the challenges are, are many. And in, in, in also a very important discussion about abortion. The first attitude of Muslims, which is the right one, the general position is, no to abortion. But be careful. It's no to abortion as something, by the way, uh, if you listen even to the people who, are, who were or still are advocating abortion as something which is a right, they are not saying, uh, oh, abortion is good, uh, we are happy to go. No, it's if we are facing it, we need to have the choice. We need to decide what is happening with us. Sometimes they are exaggerating and they are using abortion as a way of a contraceptive. That's, that's wrong for us. But when it comes to abortion, we have to be very clear. The first position that is accepted by all the scholars, if, if the life of the mother is in danger, you can go for it. Okay, this is. But now, you look at the general position of Islam and then you come to all the specifics specific situation, and you'll find that all the fatawa are opening doors. In fact, abortion is no abortion in general, and then you take case per case to know what you are going to do. So for example, the discussion that we had in Bosnia, after the war in Bosnia, where you have scholars coming from Saudi Arabia saying, no abortion, because this baby is not yours. Yes, you have been raped, but it's not your baby, so you have to keep it. Some other scholars were saying no. This was not an act of freedom. You were imposed, you can go for abortion. So you had two positions, but you understand the differences that what could happen. So some were saying, if you have the, the pills just the, 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 the day after pills and you are going straight to this, you can go for that. Some others were saying, no, even if it's two, three weeks later and this is the only way for you to uh, uh, go for abortion, go for abortion. And some other scholars saying, no. Not at all. You have to keep the, 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 the baby. So I think here that uh, this is where you have the discussions and, and, one, uh, and the, the scholars here uh, are saying, look, there is the formal decision, but there is the psychological, post-war psychological trauma. Can you deal with this? Because at the end of the day, one of the <coughs> rights of the, 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 the children is education and well-being. What if in the past, uh, war trauma, you are sticking to the, the, the rule and not understanding that you will have something which is unbalanced. You know, uh, kids and mothers even, because they are suffering, they are not acknowledging that this is their, uh, 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 their child, for example. These are very complex questions, and this has to do with abortion. But the point is that in Islam, the fact that we have a hukum, well, fatwa, and it's a case per case, this is why it's very dynamic. If we get the scholars coming with, 
you know, the medical doctors, the physicians telling you on the ground, this is what I'm facing. So I need a decision now. I need to take a decision. What can I do? And the scholars getting a very, uh, a more complex or complexified uh, perception of the reality is not yes and no in your office. It's really we are dealing with, with suffering. We are dealing with, with things that are this, this you know, post-traumatic uh, 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 impact after the war could destroy a society if you just don't face the problem. And we were dealing with, you know, we don't know the exact figures, but between 20,000 rapes to 60,000. It's a society. It's a whole society that can be uh, affected by this. So we have to deal with it uh, and to ask ourselves in, in which way. And, and the scholars came with interesting positions and different positions, a diversity of positions on that, from complete rejection to opening up doors. And once again, it's not new. Even Abu Hamid al-Ghazali was dealing with it and was dealing with things that were, you know, on the hadith that you can uh, uh, intervene uh, before 120 days, because it's three months, opening up uh, this position, which is now a minority position among the scholars. It's too long, but they, some of them are accepting the fact that you can intervene, they can go for it before uh, 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 the time, very soon after uh, the accident, or depending on the specific situation. This is where, when you talk like this, when I, I, I wrote the book, Can We Live With Islam, to a, a, a Christian professor, I said, I didn't know that it was so dynamic, it was so open, that we have this field to discuss. And this is where we have to come with this discussion. And what happened in this field with these scholars is a very, very updated positioning and saying, these are the different positions and you can just go for uh, 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 a solution or an answer that is suitable for you. Uh, I just wanted to say, so, so these are the questions where what are the sensitive medical questions that we may have today? These are two of the most important. Uh, uh, we are facing, still facing uh, genital mutilations, that this is also something that we are facing. Things that are important, and I, I mentioned uh, three of them in the book, is all this discussion that we, uh, I talked about it yesterday on organ transplantation. Where in Islam, except of the organ of reproduction, everything is possible. You know that, that in Islam, the majority position is it's possible, and they came from this position, this understanding that, you know, min usul al fiqh life has, has primacy over uh, 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 death, so you can take from the dead body and you can save. Uh, all this is okay, from a Muslim to a non-Muslim, from a non-Muslim to a Muslim. Uh, not a problem with this. Uh, so, so this is possible. Now, the problem is that it's easy to get to that level. The problem that we are facing, as I told you, is the complexity, the complex relationship between medical sciences and economic power, the transnational. Nothing is said, for example, coming from Muslims to, uh, about the, the generic uh, uh, medicines, that this is today a way to resist exploitation from the north towards the south. And very often we don't take a stand on that. While it's necessary, it's ethical to say, why this uh, transnational uh, uh, corporation are making so much money with uh, medicines, while we can get them uh, cheaper and help the people. And this was the case with AIDS in South Africa, for example. The complaint coming from South Africa is that you have the means to help us, but you want the money to kill us. So this is where the ethical positioning from Muslims should not only be on technicalities, it's also a philosophy of uh, uh, dealing with uh, medical sciences. And this is where we are starting, and we have done a lot, but still there are very sensitive issues like this one where we need answers, where we need fatawa or at least an ethical stand. Uh, be careful with what we are saying here. I'm not saying that we need a fatwa for everything. An ethical stand is not always a fatwa. Okay? An ethical stand is 
this is what it should be. Now, sometimes we need a fatwa, which is a legal opinion, but it's not always. An ethical stand is this, we are talking here about justice, this is the way it should be reformed, which is not uh, always, uh, should not be translated into a fatwa. What I'm talking about here is what is happening, for example, with organ transplant in some of our hospitals. In the, in the north, but also in Muslim majority countries and in the south, where today we know it, uh, uh, it takes money just to, for example, uh, keep someone alive when he is uh, naturally in the terminal final stage and we keep him or her alive to be able, or sometimes it's because we don't have the final response. Is it irreversible or not? We need the, medi the physician to come and to tell us, to tell us this is, this is over. He's not going to come back. So this is why you have to take a decision. Now we know, it happened in Switzerland, uh, uh, my country, where we know that the economic pressure, is so expensive that some decisions are taken for the sake of money, to save money. And sometimes because someone is waiting and need the organs, so we are under pressure. So the decision was taken, for example, in Switzerland, and it was a, a vote that the, the, the physician who is going to tell the family your relative is dead should not be the same as to the one who is going to say to the, 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 the other, we find are not an organ, because there is conflict of interest. Muslims are completely lost in this discussion. We are not there. Because it's, a, it's a, another level. It's where economy and medicine are coming together. And medicine today, it's, you know, it's making money. And it's making money, it means you have to deal with transnational corporation and you have to take a stand. All the Muslim majority countries, they don't have any restriction to deal with transnational corporation. They are ready for it, they do it, they are ready even to pay. The, the, the transnational corporation dealing with medicine and producing them, the, one of the, the biggest markets that they have is in the Arab, you know, the petromonarchies. They're ready to pay. So there is no philosophy here. So we are working, in fact, in something which is completely disconnected world. There is a disconnect here between what is done and what should be our... And this is why what you are saying it's important. We need here sometimes to take a political stand which is not only a tech, an, an ethical stand, because an ethical stand without power to express it and to resist some of the, you know, the economic order that is in fact an ethical, it's not going to, to lead us anywhere. We, we can't do that. But, so I'm, I'm just saying what, that, what are the first steps and at the same time the contradictions and what is not done. So in the uh, organ transplantation, this is something which is important. Another thing which is here quite interesting is euthanasia, where the Muslims are, are, are really, really at the forefront of, of the discussions here. I, I saw things that were very interesting, even with uh, uh, you know, the passive and active euthanasia. You know that there are different types. Uh, I was talking with one of our brothers, a Salafi uh, uh, alim in, in, in London. He was saying, euthanasia is wrong from say, I'm sorry. And this is the problem that we have sometimes, is that he is, he is, he is focusing on the text and he's not even reading what is produced by Muslim scholars on that. And, and he, didn't, he didn't even know that there are different types of uh, euthanasia, active and passive, and, and the passive it's accepted uh, uh, from an Islamic viewpoint when you stop giving the medicine that it's the final stage, the, med the medical doctor is, and the physician is telling you that's over, it's the final stage, he, he's not going to come back. So you can stop, and this is referred uh, uh, and, and studied by, by, by scholars. So, so we are here in a situation when we can say, yes, Muslims and Muslim, uh, the fuqaha are with the help of the, uh, the, the physicians coming with inter interesting answers. Uh, and once again, always the same is when we are talking about euthanasia is also uh, uh, some of the, the, the limits that we are reaching when it comes to other dimension with economy that are not touched, but on that field, it's good. Last point that, am I still in my time? Yes. Uh, the last point uh, that I, I, I was talking about it uh, uh, yesterday is sometimes where we are not responding. One of the main challenges of our time over the last uh, uh, decade was, of course, AIDS. 
And the moral qualification of it as being the illness of the homosexuals and the bad behavior made it very difficult for the Muslims to come and even for the medical doctors to come with an answer on that. It was just we are rejecting in many Muslim majority societies or in the communities. If you are getting it or you are infected, you don't speak, you just disappear. And sometimes you are, some of our brothers and sisters passed away and it was not known. There, there was a, you know, hypocrisy. It should not be done. It's, it's wrong. It could be out of, yes, a wrong uh, sexual behavior or it could be because of uh, 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 blood, uh, um, transfusion uh, or whatever it could the point is that there is something which is very important that the, the physicians should teach the Muslim scholars uh, and this is coming from the medical code of ethics whatever is your religion whatever is your status whatever is the cause or the reason of your sickness I don't care, you are a human being, I'm going to try to cure and to help you. There is no moral qualification on a sick, specific sickness. There is no. Poor, rich, black, white, Muslims, non-Muslims, I'm not here to ask you about the reasons, I'm trying to solve the problem. And sometimes the scholars are not getting that. They are projecting and they are scared of the community, so the medical doctors sometimes when they are Muslims are also, uh, it's very difficult for them to face the community. Uh, and in some of the, the, the situation, it, it's very difficult that you have to take a decision uh, that is not understood by the community. For example, uh, we were dealing with drugs in Mauritius. And there is a program there that we are dealing with drugs and they are going to be infected and to, in order to avoid AIDS, you are going to give them uh, what they need, but something which is clean, you know, the, how do you call this, the syringes, the syringes, uh, so <laughs> uh, should be clean and in order to avoid infection. So they were trying to go to the mosques to say this, that we need your help, you need the help of the scholars to help us because drugs, and, and addiction and infection, AIDS is there. We are dealing with that. And the great majority of the, the, the masks are saying, no, you can't come to tell us that we have to give them <coughs> clean uh, syringes. That's right? Syringes. Now tell me the right pronunciation. Syringes. syringes. Uh, in order to prevent them from being, we can't do this. It's, it's to promote haram, to prevent uh, uh, something which uh, the so-called helping the, the no we can't do that and this is where once again if you don't get the whole picture if you're not facing the complexity you come with just an ethical stand is haram haram and we don't talk about it so in this in the name of this blindness in fact it's a very dangerous situation it's like uh, you, you heard about Mother Teresa in Calcutta you know, he, she is coming there, and uh, I went there, and I saw what she was doing. It's great. It's just impressive, impressive what she was doing to help the poor. But at the same time, she's saying no contraception. So in fact, she's curing, and in the name of her faith, Catholic, she's imposing onto people who are not sharing her faith attitude that are not helping these people to, to solve their problems. So. By doing this, it's counterproductive in itself. So it's great, but the moral positioning of her in Calcutta is problematic. You're not going to hear this in the West, because in the West she was great. But when you go there and you ask, what is the point? What are you doing? Why are you imposing this position on people who need to find a solution? Because uh, without you know, uh, anything which has to do with contraception, they are having more and more children. There is no vision for the future. So you are promoting something which is destroying the society there. And as Muslims, we don't have a problem with that. We don't have a problem helping the people to be much more reasonable in the way they deal with their family. She had a problem coming from the Catholic tradition in a situation, in a society where the great majority of the people are Muslims. 
but they are protecting them on one side and exposing them on the other. So here is a discussion which is a bit balancing this idealization of some of the you know, activities that some people could have in the third world. So my, my, what I wanted to say here is that in this, as uh, uh, in that field of medical sciences, what is interesting is the first steps are already here. That we are doing the job and the medical, the, the scholars of the text are listening to the physicians and the understanding that it's very complex. So we have very effective new positioning on cloning, on euthanasia, on contraception, on abortion. It's interesting, it's important. Now, what is missing is the step, which is after this one, with this connection with other dimensions, the economic. Uh, imposition, the transnational corporation, something which is missing in our discussion. We want something which is very Islamic as to punishment, but not so much Islamic as to finance and economy. So we don't touch this. So this, the order is not touched and we are dealing with it in a way which is, even uh, through what was done by the, the, the Kuwaiti organization, it's, it's something which is missing in the whole uh, 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 the whole field. So what I wanted to, you to understand with all this discussion, I will open up uh, the discussion right now, is, okay, in that field, what were the needs? It's just this methodology was needed for many reasons. And now, what are the main questions that we are facing in medicine today? Uh, and by the way, I haven't talked here in that field also to all the dimensions that are connected in a way with this, which has to do with uh, mental uh, 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 ill and all the dimension of psychology, psychiatry, which we have some of our brothers and sisters working on that field, but it's a missing dimension here. It's, it's too sensitive to be touched today because we feel that we are touching something which is, it's between, you know, uh, too sensitive to be Islamically tackled or a world where the Junoon and the Jinns are, are, are very often referred to. We are dealing with superstition here, much more with effective scientific take on, on, on this dimension. So just to raise the right questions in the field and to try to, to, to get which kind of answers are coming. So this is what I want you to do in arts and uh, uh, entertainment uh, and culture with economy later and then with gender. What are the main questions uh, and how are you going to put these questions? What are the priority questions and which kind of answers you think we have or we don't have coming from the scholars today? Uh, this is the way I wanted to, to, so this is what I try to, to show you. We have some answers and that's good. And there are other answers that we don't have because still the, it's too complex, it's too uh, challenging. I want you to do the same, but now with your questions, not with the questions that you can find in the book. I chose some of the questions, but I want you to be much more uh, uh, involved in the discussion in the next sessions this afternoon. We, I think that it, it's, it's there, but it's not the only attitude that we have among the scholars. Uh, some of our scholars of the text are really bright and we need to, the, the point is really to, to find them and to choose who are men and women, the people who are bright in their field. And we have very bright scholars. On the other side, we have others that are avoiding this position, which is very, get lots of expertise in their field, but very childish when it comes to the Islamic reference, they want, you know, just very easy answers and, and they are not expecting Islam to be complicated and complex. But you have other attitudes and I think that this is where you have some scholars who have, I would say any scholar, any scientist, any sociologist and political experts who has an ethical concern would not have this attitude towards the, the scholars of the text. The ethical concern is, you have something to tell me. You have something to provide me with. Which, and I think that this is the people that we need to, we, we, we are not going to change the mindsets of the people and that through in some families, the less equipped intellectually is going to learn you know, religion 
and others are going to be medical doctors and okay. But I would say that uh, we need to look at our uh, communities in another way and to find the people who don't have this and they can work together. And out of a, a discourse that is sent to the community to, to show how much uh, this is different, this is not the case. This is why you, if you have studied, it's important to come back to the community and to show how much it's important to be equipped with the two knowledges and to show how much it's important that ethics is not you know, a secondary discipline. Ethics is the first discipline of our time because if without ethics we are going to destroy the world. Without ethics, the West is going to destroy the world. This is why we are talking about global warming. This is why we are talking about, you know, uh, the economic crisis, it's economy without ethics, it's politics without ethics. And this is exactly where we can contribute. So it's a discourse based on confidence that ethics is the first field and science of our time because it's necessary if we want to save ourselves and save the planet. I would, I would, I would change the discourse, change the substance, and find the people within our communities or our societies that can help to work together, ha not having this mindset. And you have a lot. You have a lot of people. I, I think that we, we should not be misled by the common, you know, uh, 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 at the grassroots level, the common understanding that, you know, at the end of the day, uh, uh, the best is to be a, a medical doctor or to work in, in science and and, and uh, religious sciences uh, are not so important. It's not always the case. I think it's not always. You know, you also have religious ulama uh, in Nusus, the way they look at the people, it's sometimes very, you know, patronizing. You say, you know, you know you're, you're just a, a teacher. You're, so Islamic science is something, except when they are sick. <laughs> And they know how much it's important. Oh, I saw people, the way they were talking about you know, the other sciences, and when they have something, it's completely different. They understand the very essence of what it is at the end. So we have to, to build a new narrative on that. We have a problem with our categorization of sciences. We have a problem within the Muslim community. We keep on saying it's comprehensive, but that's not true. In our understanding, in our practices, it's not. We are still differentiating between Islamic sciences and other sciences, and we are still creating an implicit hierarchy between the sciences. You know, even when people are saying, oh no, I don't speak about Islamic sciences, I got your point, but I'm speaking about sacred sciences, oh, it's, it's, it's even worse. What is the opposite of sacred sciences? I'm sorry, if a medical doctor, a physician, is starting by saying Bismillah rahman rahim and he's saving a life, it's very sacred. It's sacred. If someone who is just getting all this knowledge to save animals is sacred. He's praying when he's doing that. It's a prayer. It's a sadaqah. And we have to come with this understanding that we have to reassess our understanding. And if you look, for example, in the sequences, many people, they are not following, but I, I wrote the first book to be a European Muslim. Uh, it was in the beginning, and, and I came with the traditional uh, uh, chart of what are the Islamic sciences, you know, Al Quran, Al Sunnah, and all that. In the second book, Western Muslims and the Future of Islam, I changed this by saying we should change even our understanding, our chart of things. It's a circle, is the, 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 you know, the text and the, the, the two texts and the way we deal with sciences. Understanding that the object of your science is giving you the methodology. And when you respect the methodology, this is where you are Islamic. You are Muslim when you respect the methodology that is given to you by the object that you are studying. So faithfulness to the rules that are given by God in the text which is uh, 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 revealed, or in the text which is the world, the universe, this is why we are very Islamic. Faithful to the rules is Islam. So when you are trying to get the very essence of the Arabic semantic and morphology and grammar, you are dealing with Islam because you are trying to be faithful to the substance. But when you are dealing with the world and you are respecting nature, you are respecting animals, this respect of what Allah is giving you, this is where you are Muslims. An Islamic science is the respect of God's objectives in your knowledge. This is it. So everything is Islamic. 
in that sense. But you don't have to put every time Islam just to be confident. The way we are, we are using words because we are lacking confidence. I don't know if you get my point, but uh, it's a long answer.